You're now tuned into Sykes Weekly Nerf Dosage. You know what the sad thing is? I only found out about frozen grapes like about a year ago. And let me tell you, this is awesome. I don't even think most Singaporeans actually consume frozen grapes. Man, anyway. Ah, but frozen grapes are awesome. <laughs> I just feel sad that no one actually introduced it to me much earlier, you know what I mean? <laughs> but don't eat frozen grapes if they have seeds in it. Hey, what's up good people? Welcome to episode 59 of Pwned. And in this episode, I have frozen grapes. Mm -hmm. And they're really nice to eat. Okay, I'm just kidding. Alright, wait. Let me just enjoy this. Okay, so for the first part of the video, I'm actually going to showcase to you guys what is known as a universal breach. Okay, it's been recently developed, so click here, all this annotation to go to that part. And you can click around my face area for more information about the upcoming, um, what's it called again? Oh man, it slipped my mind. Human vs. Zombies War in Singapore, I'm so sorry. Okay, and the last part is about this uh, little UV light attachment for uh, I guess Nerf Blasters but in this particular case it's about the Nerf Strife so click away while I eat another frozen grape and take a sip of green tea okay so if you're not going to click away well then let's proceed to the first part of the video now in my hands is a modified retaliator what modifications okay wait wait, wait. this was actually provided to me by Zin but inside it I mean, besides the apparent brass that's sticking out, is something called a universal breach attachment. It's a new, uh, I guess, a new development by one of the local nerfers here. Uh, his name is Tiai, aka Area503. You guys can uh, check the link in the video description. I'll actually put a link up to his Facebook group. Go check it out. So what Tiai did was he actually developed a little kit, simple installation kit, okay, uh, to enable almost any nerf elite blaster. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. To, <laughs> sorry, pardon me. To enable almost any Nerf Elite Blaster, um, you know, to, to basically fire Stefan Dart, you know, um, because you know of a, of the breach, the original breach system and all. So the only thing that you actually need is um, about four inches worth of brass, and of course you can see Epoxy Party over here. Um, yeah, I know you can't really see much in this system or in this lighting, uh, because yeah, because of the lights and everything. But basically, uh, I'll just try. I don't think you guys can see it. There's a little like nub. Okay, don't worry. I have an installation video after this. Okay, so don't worry. But uh, this one is already modified, as in the the thing itself is modified. Please make sure that before you actually perform the installation of this uh, sealed breach kit, um, please, 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 please don't be stupid and remove your air restrictors first. Okay, remove your air restrictors. And this particular retaliator has an upgraded spring. I believe that this could be a five to eight kilogram spring. I think it's about a five kilogram spring. So I'm just gonna. You know, uh, give you guys a quick firing demonstration. This is like a loaded clip, Stefan clip, with a whole bunch of like weird Stefans. I just randomly grabbed like there's some blue foam Stefan, some white foam one, some a pink one, and then a black foam Stefan. But I'll just fire like maybe about three out of this particular retaliator to show you uh, the powers of a sealed breach kit, uh, which is the universal breach. Okay, so the universal breach is this completely sealed breach kit that feeds. And I gotta stop doing that. My dad just disappeared. Okay, I'll, I'll, try and sh I'll try and fire the darts over there, okay? So as you can see, it's firing... Oh, oh man, the dart... The dart broke. But <laughs> that also goes to show the sheer power of this particular thing. Um, and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So what I did was, um, I mean, I installed it into an Alpha Trooper, an Elite Alpha Trooper. Jiayu was kind enough to actually provide me with one uh, of these kits for review. And I performed the installation. And because most of them at the recent uh, end of the year war in Nerf, Nerf SG, um, what am I saying? Most of the people there who actually had these Universal Breach kits to test out uh, at the Nerf SG's end of the year war, yeah, that's what I should have said, all installed it into Retaliators. I mean, because, you know, for, for the obvious reason, it's like almost a pistol. It's a pretty easy um, installation. All you gotta do is just, you know, glue in the breach part the kit and then you just find a way to align this barrel and that's it 
However, uh, Zinf, after the prototype, Zinf actually went on to create a, I guess, a centering barrel piece, and I'll be showing that to you guys in the installation video of um, what I did for the Alpha Trooper. So I just wanted to let you know that yes, it works on the Alpha Trooper, and this video is also dedicated to you, Jia Yi. Thanks for providing me with this kit, and uh, well, here you guys go. Take a look at what the Universal Kit is like up in close, up close and personal, up close, up close. <laughs> This is an Elite Alpha Trooper and uh, I'm going to be performing the installation of the Universal Breach into the internals of an Elite Alpha Trooper. Of course, no brainer, please remove your air restrictor. This Alpha Trooper has its air restrictors removed already so please don't be silly and install this Universal Breach system <laughs> with a system that still has its air restrictors intact. That's just kind of dumb, right? So anyway, you'll get this piece like that. Okay? And then what else you need is like goop or something or like super glue, you know, like simple stuff. Right, uh, I just want to make this uh, clear to all of you. Zinv actually passed me this extra piece over here and this is to help to kind of center your barrel. Now you need about 4 inches of brass. Yay, it's the very first time I'm actually using brass on Pwned after so many episodes, right? Actually, this is the first time I'm actually working with brass uh, in my entire Nerf uh, history. So there you go, first time for everything, right? Uh, and this, oh sorry, I kind of reamed this part out as you can see, I reamed it out a bit. But anyway, this is supposed to go inside uh, here like so. Yeah, it's supposed to fit inside as you can see, All right? And it's uh, centered perfectly for this uh, particular type of brass. This over here is the, uh, what is this called? 916 brass, is it? Yeah, 916 brass. Is that right? Yeah. So it's not 1732 because this is a stub of 1732 and uh, this actually goes in very nicely as you can see. Okay, both ends, just so you know. So it's a 916, not 1732, and it's because we're using Stefans and not normal streamlines. There we go. But unfortunately, this thing, the centering piece, does not fit uh, into the Alpha Trooper's muzzle over here. But you don't even want that because you're actually using like the optimal barrel length is about 4 inches. It should sit about here, at where the old dart gate used to be. And as you can see, there's no point having a front centering, so we're gonna use E tape to you know make up for that when it's sitting inside here, like yeah, you know, so E tape, right? All right, so what does this do actually? Now, have you guys realized that the original, um, uh, I guess the demonstration piece of the the universal breach was actually in a retaliator, so I have like a new uh, stock retaliator just to show you guys. Okay, it's just a shell as you can see there. Okay, there is a breach, but there's no plunger inside. My bad. Okay, but anyway, yeah, it's a it's a non-functional retaliator. But look at the muzzle over here. All right, so this fits in perfectly. So it's meant to be that way as a perfect fit. Let me just get this thing. Ah, okay, there we go. So it's a friction fit as you guys can see. Okay, um, it's supposed to sit all the way in. Uh, yeah, like that. Okay, and uh, just to prove to you guys that it works with all these muzzles with stock attachments, I've got another blaster, which uh, should not, which you should not be using the Universal Breach on, but it's the Elite Spectre, as you can see, with a stock attachment, and uh, there we go. It fits perfectly, as you can see. Uh, but it's really flush and this is really sweet if you're actually using it on a retaliator uh, system but i am here using it on a alpha trooper so i don't really need this however i would like to give credit to zin for actually doing that what that achieves is a nicer finish as opposed to you know stuffing the barrel with epoxy party like this but you know epoxy party also gets the job done right so yeah first of all we're gonna get this piece which is your Universal adapter first of all. Okay, let me just get the focus right Focus on this thing. Okay, there we go the universal adapter as you can see it's a nicely printed out 3d piece and um, There's an o-ring here and what it does is your o-ring is supposed to go sit um, Inside your 916 brass like so and that creates the the crazy seal see uh, Yeah, it's airtight. Don't expect me to blow down. You know the barrel on camera. All right, so yeah, I mean, if you can hear that, then you guys already know it's a great seal, right? Alright, so this is supposed to go into that lip. So I'm going to show you guys over here. No, actually, I didn't even have to take this out, but yeah, I'll do it for you anyway. So see this? And you see this? Right, it's supposed to sit like that. <clears throat> so I know the the the... the the bolt slide is in the way, but you know, you guys get the picture, right? It's that, that, oh, stupid, stupid, 
anyway uh yeah it's supposed to sit right there so it's supposed to fit the curve and uh, it would not shift left or right that's what it is okay so now i'm going to get myself some goop and i'm going to goop up this area and then uh, stick it inside now make sure there's no air restrictor as you can see no air restrictor i removed it already yeah you need more proof there we go no air restrictor okay don't be dumb all right catch you in a bit So I've gooped the thing in, okay, and removed the excess goop on, along the ridge over there. So now as we're waiting for this goop to cure, you, well, you can just put it back in place first. But uh, I'm going to do it later on. I'm just leaving it there. In the meantime, you need to grab this, which is the dart gate. Oh, sorry about this uh, extra thing. Yeah, it's just blocking. But you need to get this dart gate and you got to find a way to actually remove. It's not really find a way. Just unscrew and take out the uh, whole dart tooth system. Now for this over here, I've decided that I did not want to remove the peg, so that you know, in case in the future if I want to revert it back into you know being just a stock firing blaster, at least I could just remove the goop for the universal uh, adapter area. But for this, I decided that I want to just you know kind of get the brass and I want to install it in such a way that it'll sit like that, so that you know this thing will not be in the way. But at least I could remove that, right? So it it should sit. I think the brass should sit about just about here, right? Just yeah, al al along this ridge over here, because that's where the mag goes in, right? So try and make it flush like that. But we don't really know the exact measurements yet, not until this goop is cured. But in the meantime, uh yeah, I've been holding this up with that little bit of vinyl tubing because you know I wanted to try it out. So yeah, let me just get that done again. Shoot, my fingers really fat. So here we go. Alright, so this plays no significance at this point in time, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to get some E-tape, okay, and uh, I've already reamed out this part over here, okay, as you can see, it's like slightly flared out, yeah, you can see, uh, that's because I wanted it to be easy for the O-ring to go in, it's my personal preference, okay, because it won't be touching the dart, right, that will just feed in anyway, it'll help with feeding, but I'm going to wrap E-tape at about this area over here, and another area which is about here now the e-tape over here is supposed to be a snug fit for the barrel which is going to be like that so it's going to be centered here uh actually honestly to be about like that okay and uh, the e-tape here is to go in snug with the dart gate area which is supposed to be around here so if i were to do what i just did just now um let me see i get it flush so it's about like that right about like that i'll try my best to hold it down okay guys sorry i know it's hard but yeah it should be like that and this is the Alpha Trooper, how it, how it lies. So you can see that kind of uh, differentiation in color. That's where the barrel ends. So this part over here, right, is going to have to be in the center of this. Okay, so that's what I'm going to work on first before I work on the other end. Right, um, E-tape time. This is the tricky part to get the o-ring over here to sleeve over this this piece of the brass okay so let's see what we can do there we go that's the brass feeding in and uh, let's see, make sure that the plunger tube and everything is sitting nicely. Okay, it looks good, it looks good so far, looking good. Sit this guy back down here and uh, make sure that this is, this is in the uh, correct position. Give me just one second. Okay, looks good so far. So this is in the most forward position. Okay, I should I should get rid of that, but uh, okay, got this piece out. Now I should be able to hold it here. Yes, perfect, exactly like that. That's what I want to stay in this position all the time. 
Okay, so it's completely forward, alright, I mean, uh, I mean this over here, and uh, I want to check if that is still a 100% seal, and yes it is, as you can see, you, you, can't, you cannot tell where the o-ring is, so this is the position that it should be in, now, if you notice, like, this is kind of coming upwards a little bit, and that's why we need this to help us out, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and group this in, in place now, so that, you know, this part will actually be a lot better, uh, we'll see how that goes, yeah? So, mm. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, but yeah, I, I you know, you know, we all make mistakes sometimes. Uh, it happens to the best of us. I'm not saying that I'm the best, but yeah. Um, shit happens, and uh, I thought, you know, actually, I should just kind of install this with the blaster shell closed instead. It, it would definitely help me out, you know, with the uh, alignment of this thing. So, I, I, I decided to redo this whole part. Um, yeah. So. That's what I'm gonna do, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how it's how I am gonna do it. I'm gonna leave this whole muzzle area out so that uh, you know I can actually access this area with the blaster shell closed. This part of the blaster I will leave out also, and the jam door just in case, okay? And then we just close up the blaster like this. Of, of course, there's no spring in here. Please take note of that, All right? Uh, and yeah, so just uh, install a couple of screws and then uh, put back part of the grip, and then we should see how it goes. I don't even know if I need the grip. I don't even think I do, but anyway, yeah, so here goes. Alright, so that's that, uh, yeah, and then I still have this, so I can, I can still move this, right, like so, oh shoot, I left the lock in place, wait, let me just push it back to the front, and then it should be able to prime again, yeah, okay, perfect, that's what I'm gonna do, okay, uh, push this all the way back to the front, squeeze the trigger, and push it back in, okay, great. So uh, I gotta make sure that this is always closed, so you can see inside it's closed, alright? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, off camera, because it's kind of hard for me to see, I need the light source like that, I'm gonna align it up here, and then when I'm actually in the midst of doing it, then I'll show it to you guys, okay? Welcome back. I think I'm stuttering and I'm not speaking properly or as good as usual because my tongue is feeling very happy. Wait, that sounded wrong. <laughs> because of all the frozen grips. You know what I mean? Come on, guys. You gotta stop thinking so dirty, okay? Anyway, this is the modified um, Elite Alpha Trooper. Yes, air shifters have been removed, but the spring is still the original stock spring. I have not upgraded this spring into a more powerful one but that is just to showcase to you guys the firing power of this thing that is actually able to fire off Stefan darts now very well and um, I know you guys can't really see it let me try to show you on camera that I had the breach installed uh, let's see whether I can get any light inside alright uh, you know what I can't really do that but anyway yeah that is the brass breach over there no matter how hard I try, I don't think I can actually get light in there. But yeah, it's the it's the brass barrel over there, um, and uh, hopefully you can see the O-ring. Can you see the black O-ring just here? Yeah, that's it. That's the seal breach kit. See? Yeah. Okay. So that's not so bad. Now you guys, now now you guys know that this thing is a uh, universal breach kit inside the Alpha Trooper. So uh, I'll be firing off from the same leftover uh, clip, whatever was not fired from that retaliator over there. Okay, inside this thing, right, I'm going to show you guys uh, two single shots and how many darts do I have? One, two, okay, two single shots and three slam fire shots just to show you guys that this thing works, okay? Single shot, two single shots out, now it's slam fire, okay, three times, alright, here we go. Done. I still have one more dart left, uh, yeah, uh, this one, oh, I you should not drive fire a blaster, but I just did anyway. So yeah, this was the Universal Breach Kit developed by Jia Yi, aka Area 503, in conjunction with Zinf. Thank you so much, all of you, for you know putting your mind, your heart, and your soul into this kit, developing something that will definitely benefit everyone. The way I installed it, it's completely removable, and you can actually just unmod your blaster and make it fire back 
I mean, make it revert back to being able to fire Steph, uh, Stefan. Streamline darts, yeah, streamline size darts. But, you know, accuracy wise, we're always going for Stefan's, right? So, this is really good. Plus, it's a 100% seal. You know, O ring in the brass. Yeah. Let me just, okay. Well, this plunger isn't really um, well done. It's not 100% seal inside a, inside a plunger. So, yeah, just wanted you guys to hear that this breach over here at least is quite good. I'm pretty sure you can hear the air hissing out slowly. But you heard it, it's like Psst. So it's as good as here's the air restrictor itself, the air cushion. This is really a good kit. Uh, it's cheap, it's affordable, and it's very simple to install. So those of you who want to make your blasters or elite blasters fire off Stefan's, this is your solution. Okay? Now on to the next part of the video, which is the human vs zombies information. See you then. Alright, so now I'm gonna talk to you about the Upcoming Human vs Zombies War. Now, I don't really. I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you a lot of information about it because there is a website. So, check out this link over here. It's www.nervesg.org. Don't get it wrong. Slash HVZ. Now head on down there and read up. Read up the FAQs. Find out the correct date, set your days aside, sign up for it. I have signed up and I'm really looking forward to this because it's the first official Human vs Zombies game ever here in Singapore and I want to be an experience, I, I want to be a part of the experience. So I really hope that you guys will, will join in and uh, come say hi. I mean I've been to the previous few wars and people who have met me know that I'm not that evil. <laughs> I'm not a bad person. So come and say hi and join in the fun. So far, there are about, I think, 51, 52 registrations. So far, 52 signups. And the maximum limit is actually 120, you know, because it's the first time we're trying something out like that. So, anyway, kudos to uh, Jeremy. And I haven't mentioned him in a while on my videos, but he's none other than expired yogurt. Thank you so much for, you know, doing all this planning and going over these. Okay, I promise I won't eat this anymore on, on camera, okay? It's, it's hindering the way I speak. No brainer. Um, yeah, credits to him for going overseas to go play in the HVZ games and, you know, gaining the experience and, you know, basically taking pointers and then now he's moved on from that, from just participating to actually organizing it. So kudos to you, bro. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm sure that a lot of us are going to have fun, right? So, go sign up. There's one thing that you guys have to note though. Please check out the dates properly. There are some dates whereby you have to, I mean, there's a rule that you have to actually attend a briefing before you are able to play in the game. So, make sure you set all your dates aside correctly. Make sure you set a date aside for the briefing also. Personally, I think I might be going to the Potong Pasir one, which is uh, a couple of Sundays time. I forgot the date. But it's a couple of Sundays time. It's about 10 to 12. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, I would probably go for that one. Either that or on the same day, there's another one at 2 to 4 at Kampong Ubi Community Centre. It's backed by uh, PAYM, the People's Association Youth Movement, I think so, yeah. Um, so it's going to be, you know, it's going to be well organised, I promise. Yeah. So I hope to see you guys there. Human vs. Zombies, get your game on, bring all your stock blasters and let's have some fun. Yeah. So check out the website and I will see you guys there. Moving on to the last part of today's video. And that would be the strife. But it's not just the normal strife. Uh, besides it being stock and having batteries inside, there is a little, like you can see this zip tie over here, cable tie. And when I flip it up, you'll see this little, small, very interesting PCB board. And what this is, this was actually provided to me by Newbie. And uh, I forgot if he mentioned that he worked in conjunction with someone. So I'm very sorry, Newbie, if I totally missed out who he worked in conjunction with for this. But this is, um, you know, for the Night War simulation enthusiasts. So what you do, this is uh, apparently, according to him, it is a Gen 2 or Gen 3. Man, I forgot. It's one of the, yeah, well, they all perform the same task. It's just that they're built a little bit differently. So this one has a little push switch. So when you push it on, it turns on UV lights. And we all know UV lights are great at charging up glow in the dark. Uh, you know, objects or paint or color. So it's really great because this way, 
once you turn it on and you close it, if you can see the light inside the blaster in the shell, you'll see that it lines up right here, which is the tip of your dart. So this is meant for you to charge up your uh, glow in the dark tip darts, and uh, it's great for night wars. Uh, so you'll be firing lasers like Star Wars, right? So <laughs> with that said, I have prepared myself a six dart clip, and I have three of these old, like you know, the glow in the dark darts that came with the. I believe it was originally the Elite Raven. No, no, I mean the original Raven. Yeah. So I'm gonna load it up with three of these. Okay, I've not done a, a video <laughs> with the lights off in a long time. So please pardon me, I'm just going to try and get this on camera for you nicely, okay? And then we have these uh, full-length um, homemade darts, which apparently have a little blue and dark tip heads. Blue and the dark tips, silicone tips. Yeah, so uh, I have all six inside here. Let's see how this goes. I'll be trying to fire it off. So I'll be standing behind the camera with um, this Strife right in front and I'll be firing in this general direction okay first of all I'm going to turn off the lights but put the clip in first and then I will turn on this light over here just so that you guys can see it and then I will leave it here on camera so hopefully you can still see it can you still see it on the camera can you can you can you oh yeah you can okay cool all right so uh, wait let me just get myself behind the camera without actually knocking anything over okay so I'm going to close this thing you can see my my very beautiful hands I'm just kidding all right so that's it closed uh Wait, let me just turn on the light. I mean, turn on this light again so I'll tell you guys where I'm pointing. Okay, I'm going to be firing in... Wait, let me just use my right hand instead. Okay, you can see my right hand. I'm going to fire it off in this general direction where my finger's pointing. Okay, so let's check that out. Here we go. Revving it up. And dot, go. Wow, see that? Oh man, you guys can't see it. Oh, there you can. You saw that one bounce back, right? Okay, I'll try again. Oh, that one's nice. That one's nice too. Okay, I'm gonna fire off the last one into my hand. Oop, I missed it. Okay, let me just get the dart and show you guys. There we go. See this dart? Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's half illuminated look. <laughs> but anyway, it works wonders. Um, this is the UV light kit to be fitted into a Strife. Now I'm gonna turn on the lights again. Alright, please pardon my uh, earlier little mishap where I actually did not squeeze the trigger hard enough so uh, or I did pull the trigger all the way back so it didn't really fire off the first dart but it did after the second time, second pull. But this thing works and uh, it's amazing because it's so small, right? It's, it's actually, I believe it's handmade. So it's on a thin like cut out PCB board. Let me just get behind the camera and point it to you guys. It's a thin, let me just focus this thing. There we go. Okay, it's a thin piece of, uh, yeah, you can see the PCB board, it's cut out very nicely and these are all like soldered in perfectly and this one has actually this uh, little, I forgot what these are called but you basically just insert your LED lights into that thing and this is a switch over here, it's a push switch, so you just push it down, it turns on, push it again, it turns off. Some of it are developed with a toggle switch, so yeah, very simple installation, all you gotta do is just, well I fit a uh, zip tie in between the two battery holders and um, yeah, just zip tie it onto the top of your jam door. So now you can still clear your jams while actually, you know, having the LED lights. There is another version of it. Let me just get the focus back again. Ta-da! Okay. Now there is another version of this thing, and it's meant, you know, for other blasters, not the Strife per se. Oh, I got another one of these. Anyway, um, it actually comes with a black, like thin little zip tie but I kind of swapped mine out for a big orange one because I wanted it to be orange, right? So yeah, as I was saying, where's the other piece? Is it, is it here? Oh, okay, I found it, I'm sorry. It's covered, so. Yeah, there is another version of this and uh, this is actually meant to go onto blasters such as the Retaliator or the Long Shot. So this over here is a double-sided sticky tape that's connected to a Velcro piece and in here is the battery housing. For a pair of batteries, this little black, uh, let me just flip it out. Mm, okay, this little back, back, black battery compartment or battery holder. And um, it's wired up to a pair of LED lights. Let me turn it on. I think one of the connections is actually loose, but let me just turn it on. You guys can see. Okay, so it's three LED lights in total. Two over here, one over here. And what this does, actually, it's... You know, kind of like uh, you attach a switch like maybe on the side of your blaster like that or on the other side if you want. 
and then the wire runs up the side of your blaster and if you notice that there's kind of like a some blue tack on this side you know and blue tack here and these lights are actually bent inwards and that's because you're supposed to kind of um, stick it like that how am I going to show this to you guys on camera I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing <laughs> I feel so stupid but yeah it's supposed to kind of like you either do it this way okay with uh, the PCB board on the outside and then the, the, the lights pointing inwards or you stick it against the top you know so the idea is that the barrel stick this Oh, I'll use that instead. The, uh, the whole idea of it is like, for example, this is a barrel, right? The LED light will be pointing inwards this way, so as the dart flies out, it would get charged. You know, the glow tip would get charged on the way out. So that's the idea um, for this particular version of the kit, which also works, by the way. Um, just that I'm too lazy to install it, I'm sorry. You guys already saw the one on the Strife, right? So yeah. Of course, the Strife one would actually be able to charge it up to a brighter glow because, you know, Darts are actually sitting on top of the uh, clip, and that's directly below where the LED lights are. So then that's why you get a stronger uh, and a better charge because it's gonna stay there for a little while, right? As opposed to just flying past, um, you know, LED lights, UV lights, UV LEDs. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's about it for this particular, you know, review on the. UV light thing, newbie. I think this is a really cool idea. I know that you're a huge fan of the Night Wars, so am I. But you know, uh, this is only if you guys really want to see like a lot of glow darts flying here and there. I think this is really cool. Now you do not need a Raven or a Fire Firefly tech to actually do this. You have newbie's cool invention. Uh, yeah. So you guys, just so you guys know, I'm doing newbie some help. I'm doing newbie a favor and just sharing it with all of you. Now, I know I'm not supposed to be eating this grape on camera again, but this thing just tastes so good. Plus, I think that they're a really healthy snack. This year, one of my resolutions is to lose weight. And uh, I decided that in order to do that, one of the things that I will have to sacrifice is supper. I will try my very best not to eat supper anymore. Right? <laughs> yeah, um... And with all of that said, that brings us to the end of today's episode. This is the first episode of 2014. I rambled quite a lot, but I also had quite a bit of content to show you guys, so I hope that you guys are happy. Um, yeah, thanks for watching all the way through. Thanks for sticking out throughout all these years. Uh, you know, I'm putting up with my nonsense here and there. Thank you for watching this whole video. And if you liked it, I hope that you guys give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing so you'll be stayed, you know, you 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 you'll be in touch or basically you'll be informed of whenever I upload a new video. 2013 started out as a pretty tough year for me, one of the toughest, but it ended off as one of the honestly one of the most memorable and one of the best years of my life. Um, I guess I did a lot of reflections, and I hope that you guys did a lot of reflections too. 2014 is going to be even better than 2013. Let's all just keep our chins up, stand strong, band together, nerf hard, play hard, and enjoy life, yeah? That's about all. You guys should be pretty bored of me actually rambling and venting already, so I'll just end the video here. You guys have a great week ahead and a great year. Happy New Year once again. I know it's a, about a week late or so, but Happy New Year once again, and may 2014 be a great year for all of you. Take care, everybody. I'll see you in the next episode of Pwned. Till then, stay cool. Peace.